numbers. Despite Russian losses, the U.S. officials also warned of what they anticipate will be, quote, an ugly next few weeks. That point was underscored during a question from Illinois Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy on the siege of Kyiv. With regard to Kyiv, uh, the Russians appear to be attempting to cut off food and water uh, to the city. How much food and water or how many days or weeks of food and water do the people of Kyiv have at this point? I don't, I don't have a specific number for days of supply that the population has. Uh, but with, with supplies being cut off, um, it will become uh, somewhat desperate in, in, I would say, 10 days to two weeks. Wow. Joining me now is Illinois Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy. He's a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thank you for joining us. It is remarkable. We've seen 13 days of this, and we've seen 2 million people leave Ukraine. Uh, the International Ref uh, Rescue Committee says that it'll be upward of 5 million people, and that's without starving out uh, the, the, the principal city in Ukraine, the city of Kyiv, the capital city. Uh, what, what was the most shocking thing that you took from that intelligence uh, briefing today? Well, I think that uh, when General Barrier said that he thinks that Kyiv could only have about two to two weeks worth of food and water, uh, that was um, that was shocking because it's a very grim situation. And in the face of it, uh, the people of Kyiv, uh, starting with President Zelensky on down, have showed such courage and determined resistance against the invading Russians. It's up to us, of course, Ali, to make sure that there are corridors open to Kyiv so that we can supply as much armaments as well as food and other uh, essential items so that they can uh, defend themselves and, and remain where they are. Congressman, uh, one of the things that was interesting about the uh, the, the hearing today was uh, the testimony today was that, uh, as Colonel Vindman said, as bad as things seem through our pictures and our discussion of the refugees, uh, the Ukrainians are holding out better than anyone expected, including uh, U.S. intelligence early on expected. And, and things are still looking possible for them. Well, how do you evaluate this? Because we've had people say, look, it, it, it's they're performing better than expected, but they can't hold out against the Russian army. Well, I, I think that it's, it's fair to say that the Ukrainians have uh, put up a resistance that nobody expected. I think they're overperforming all expectations. But at the same time, uh, they need more supplies. They need more intelligence. They need more armaments. Um, I'm glad that we have provided now, I think, $1 billion worth of uh, armaments just in the last six to seven months. And the pace has accelerated to such an extent that there are certain airfields in the eastern part of uh, Poland that are diverting cargo flights because uh, they are so full right now that uh, they're having trouble just keeping up <laughs> with the shipments. Um, so we have to continue at this pace uh, as long as possible. I think that the Ukrainians do have hope of, uh, of, of prevailing maybe sooner than we anticipated, but it's up to us to make sure that they have what, the, what it takes to defend themselves. Um, and I think that there's no nobody more motivated than the Ukrainians to defend their own country, and they're showing that right now. Congressman, uh, what do you think is going to make more of a difference? The conversation that I was having earlier about uh, the, the lethal aid that, that uh, Ukraine wants, either the no-fly zone or uh, this airplane exchange that, that uh, seems to have come uh, unglued with Poland, or the... I guess it's a it's a it's a more than twelve billion dollar package that we're looking at. Maybe a fourteen billion dollar package that uh, the House is looking at passing. I think all of the above, and there are other ways as well to provide the Ukrainians with the ability to defend their skies uh, aside from planes. And I think all options are on the table right now. Um, and I think that uh, more than anything, we have to keep ratcheting up those sanctions, Ali. Uh, I think the president has done a masterful job in assembling an international coalition that is united in that regard. Uh, but as you know, today uh, we we um, kind of up the game even more with regard to sanctions and banning the importation of Russian 
uh, petroleum, and the UK followed suit soon thereafter. And I think that is also going to put the squeeze, and that is something that President Zelensky told us during his Zoom call last weekend to members of Congress that he wants to see happen. So I think both shipping those armaments in, those supplies, and increasing the pain of the sanctions, I think is a, an essential one-two punch uh, with regard to helping the Ukrainians right now. Congressman, thanks for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy is a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Coming up next